Hey guys, I'm CG Smoothie and Blender 3.0 just came out yesterday. With a new update of Blender comes improvements to a whole slew of things, in this case animation, asset and pose libraries, geometry nodes, and what we're here to talk about, the rendering engine. In 3.0, Blender's ray tracing rendering engine Cycles got a huge update into Cycles X. With GPU enhancement, it's been shown to cut rendering times by as much as an eighth of 2.9. The problem is, most people do not have expensive computers with high-end GPUs. What if you're like me on a standard home computer or a laptop without a GPU? I did some science and testing using a Blender demo file to find out how to utilize the new rendering engine updates to their best abilities while still getting a great render. So, for my demo scene, I chose the 2.77 racing car scene because it was vibrant, had a lot of detail, and therefore would take a long time to render under normal circumstances. Blender has scenes like this available on their demo files, which I will link to in the description if you'd like to do some science as well. I gave it a render in 2.9 under base settings and came out with a render time of 16 minutes and 44 seconds. I moved it to the new 3.0 version and got a new time of 31 minutes and 46 seconds. Just to test it in another version, in 2.8 I got a render time of 35 minutes, so Cycles X is still a big improvement to most other versions on base settings. But, okay, whoa, why the huge spike in render time from 2.9 to 3.0? Well, unlike previous versions of Cycles, Cycles X ditches the old method of tile-based rendering. Now, it renders the whole scene all at once, with the tile method available, but it doesn't do multiple tiles at once like it did in old versions. So, how do we get this big wait time down? Well, like other versions of Cycles, Cycles X uses an amount to see how much refining you want to do before you call the render finished, and you can see that under the max and min sample settings here under sampling. But what was improved in 3.0 is this other setting called noise threshold. What this essentially does is set an amount of noise you are okay with in your scene. A higher value means you're okay with more noise, and a lower value means you want as little noise as possible. I tested the noise threshold as well, and when I brought the value all the way up to its max value of 1, I got this render. It only took three and a half minutes, which is a tenth of the initial render time with the noise threshold of 0.01, but you can see the grain is noticeable. I also tested a couple different values. With 0.05, just five times the threshold of the initial render, I got a render that took nine and a half minutes, which is still less than a fourth of the first render time, and the noise is barely noticeable. The final render I did was a 0.1 noise threshold, and that took five minutes and 45 seconds, and the noise is there, but still not that noticeable all things considered, and will probably be masked by YouTube compression anyway. I also noticed just some overall improvements to the denoising, as you can see on this ice cream sandwich thing over here. The curve in 3.0 is a lot smoother than the curve in 2.9 with the denoising, and I don't really know what it is, but the cake pop thing in the distance also just looks a lot cleaner in 3.0. It's also super important to mention that the viewport rendering in 3.0 is much faster than 2.9. Just look at it. I'll let 2.9 start rendering before 3.0, but as you can already see, the 3.0 scene sample count has already caught up to 2.9. And I'm telling you, they must have done something to this denoising AI, because look how much detail 3.0 has, while 2.9 just looks like it's a soft, blurred marshmallow texture. So what did we learn, and what should we take away from this? Well. While it may look like 3.0's new Cycles X rendering is only more powerful for more expensive computers, it really isn't. Even with a lower-end Costco computer like mine, you can still get good renders relatively fast. While I would stick to the lower noise threshold if you're going for a still shot, for animations, the noise threshold could be pretty high and still look really good. And if you're really crunched on time, the Blender Foundation even added a nifty little feature that lets you have a time limit to your renders. Just for the heck of it, I decided to render the same scene in 3.0 with a noise threshold of 0.05 with a time limit of 30 seconds, and this is what it turned out. The render ended up taking around 80 seconds, so don't rely too much on the value you put as the time limit. But all things considered, this is a super good render for ray tracing in 80 seconds. If you could make an animation of this quality 60 FPS, this would at least be great just for previs. And if you needed, you could use a render farm to get that crisp, no noise HD animation you so desire. And I even went a step further and added a denoising node to my compositing, which only added around 20 extra seconds, but most of the noise is gone, except for a little bit of the parts in the ice cream bit. You sacrifice a little bit of detail, but for 90 seconds for a render as good as this, I'd argue it's worth it. I hope this information was helpful for you, and helped you get your renders nice and crispy in this brand new update to our beloved program. If it was, leave a like, subscribe, and share this with other blenders you know. Speaking of other Blender users, I have a Discord that has almost 50 Blender and Unity users that hang out and help each other through their problems with the programs. And I'd also love to see the renders you come up with. With all that being said, thank you guys all so much for watching, and here's some more videos you might like.